this video, we're going to cover the different unit types that you find in the game of Sword Point. To start off with, we'll take a look at commanders. Each army will normally be led by a general. They are on a 60 mm round base. Mounted commanders are on 50 mm round bases and foot commanders on 40 mm round bases. Infantry can be either formed or skirmish formation. Close order formed infantry will have four figures on a base which is 40 mm by 40 mm. Open order formed infantry are also represented by a 40 by 40 mm base, except this time we will have three figures on the base. Skirmish order infantry will normally have two or three models per base and the base size will be 40 millimetres by 80 millimetres. A cavalry base will have two models on the base and the base size is 50 millimetres by 50 millimetres. And that is for formed cavalry. Skirmishing cavalry again will have two figures per base, but this time the base size will be 100 millimetres wide by 50 millimetres deep. Finally, there are a number of specialist troop types, such as elephants, chariots and artillery. There the base size can vary, but normally the base will be 60 millimetres wide by 80 millimetres deep. Each unit will have a minimum and maximum number of bases. For example, a skirmish unit may have a minimum number of two bases if it's infantry and a maximum number of six bases. In this video we will take a look at how you put together an army list for the game of Sword Point. For this example I'm going to be using the Medieval Army Supplement and the list I'm going to illustrate is an imperial list. Each army list will tell you what proportion of different troop types you can have. This is called the army composition. In this example, the Imperial Army list allows you to have up to six commanders, up to 50% cavalry, at least 33% of the army must be made up of Landschnecks. You may have one artillery piece for every 500 points in your list, and the list may have up to 25% of allies. In this case, we may choose allies from the later Italian states list. For the purpose of this example, we're going to construct a 1000 point list. So let's start with our commanders. Well, we need a general. The list must have one and he's not going to cost us any points. He's free. We can have up to six commanders. So for this list, I'm going to choose two mounted captains and two captains on foot. Each captain costs 20 points. So my four captains will cost 80 points. The general is free. So in total, I've spent 80 points on commanders. Next, let's add some cavalry to our list. In the Imperial Army, we have a choice of knights and retainers. I'm going to select a unit of men at arms and I can see from the description that they have full plate armour and shield. They are superior fighters. This means that they have a defence value of three, a cohesion value of eight and they're going to cost me 23 points. I'm going to choose to take the option of giving them a lance and barding. This will cost me an extra six points. So each base of men at arms is now going to cost me 29 points. I'm going to have five bases in my unit. So that's going to cost me a total of 145 points. There they are. We can add those to the army. Now, because the unit is 
less than 150 points, it will count as two towards the army break point. It's time to add some infantry. We know from our army composition that we must have at least 33% Landschnecks. Our options are pikemen, halberdiers, arquebusiers and crossbowmen. I'm going to start with some formed infantry and take some pikemen. They will have a pike, light armour, a massed pike and veteran. I could upgrade them to superior fighters and stubborn and give them heavy armour, but I'm not going to. They're a base cohesion 7 and cost 19 points each. I'm going to take three units with seven bases in each. So that's going to cost me 133 points per unit. So three units will come in at 399 points. And that's over the 33% minimum that we require. Within a pike armed unit, up to half of the figures on the front row of bases may be modelled with double handed weapon and half the dice thrown by these bases are counted as two-handed attacks. The base's defence value does not change. The number of pike armed bases in the army must be greater than the total of halberdier and arquebus armed bases in the army. I'm going to add a couple of units of skirmishers to the army. First, a unit of skirmishers armed with arquebus. They'll cost me nine points per base. I've got six bases, so that's 54 points. Secondly, I'm going to have a unit of skirmishers armed with crossbow, and they're going to cost me eight points per base. I'm going to have five bases, so that's 40 points per unit. I've chosen to have less crossbowmen than arquebus because one of the stipulations of the list is that there must be more skirmishers armed with arquebus than with crossbow. We know from the army composition that we may field up to one artillery piece for every 500 points in the list. The list is going to be a thousand points, so we could field two artillery pieces, but we're just going to field the one. Each cannon consists of one cannon and three crew. We may add up to, up to uh, three additional crew, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to keep it at three crew. So that's going to cost me 40 points. Again, looking at the army composition, we can see that we are allowed up to 25% allies. As I mentioned, these come from the Italian States list. So we're going to recruit two units of mercenary knights. They'll have plate armor, barding and a lance. Superior fighters, shock cavalry and veteran. And they're going to cost 29 points each plus an extra point for the upgrade. So they'll be 30 points each. I've only got about just under 250 points to spend. So I'm going to have to field them in two units of four. Each unit will cost me 120 points. Two units will therefore equal 240 points. And that's within our 25% limit. Here's our army. It comes in at just under 1,000 points at 998 points. The next thing we need to do is calculate the army break point. The break point of an army is calculated by allocating point values to each of its units. Any skirmish unit with at least four bases gives us one point. Any formed unit of 150 points or less will be two points. Any formed unit costing more than 150 points will cost three points. Note that commanders, elephants, scythe chariots and artillery are not allocated points. We add up the total and then divide by two, rounding down. This gives us the army break point. The difference between the points total and the army break point is the number of points an army may lose before breaking. Break points are lost during the game as units leave the table. It's good to keep a running total so you can see how close you are to your army breaking. When counting lost points, we also count two points for any general killed or fleeing off the table and one point for every commander killed or fled off the table. 
even though they did not contribute to the points of the initial calculation. Let's take a look at our final list. The first thing we should check is if the list meets the army composition criteria. So, for the Imperials, we're allowed up to six commanders, up to 50% cavalry, we must have at least 33% of the army as Landschnecks, we're allowed one artillery piece per 500 points, and we must not have more than 25% allies. Looking at our list, I can see that we meet these criteria, so we're good to go. One other thing to notice is that each list has an army breakpoint. Skirmishers count as one army breakpoint. Form troops up to 150 points count as two army breakpoints. And form troops over 150 points count as three army breakpoints.